What's up, Duelists? Brand new deck today. Full disclaimer, though. Full disclaimer. Never play this deck. Please. Please just never play this deck. <laughs> it is one of the most infuriating experiences in Yu-Gi-Oh! to have your hand ripped out by a specific card or combinations of cards. I think hand looping people is, like, incredibly degenerate and unfun, and it kind of goes against the spirit of the game. I wish these virus cards had never been printed. I think they are amongst some of the more annoying cards in the format to exist because you're basically just high rolling that you have them early and that they hit a certain number of your opponent's cards in hand. It's not, you know, the best card for competitive spirit for competitive play, but I am playing it in today's video because I want to show off that these cards do exist and that you can pretty much abuse them to death if you really want to. This is a sort of skill drain virus deck. You can build this deck in a bunch of different ways. You can build it with heroes, you can build it with dragons, you can build it even with fairies and Valhalla. I've tried all three of those different variations. I think the value variation is amongst one of the more consistent variations, naturally, because you can have a turn one deck dev pretty easily thanks to Dark Greffer. I also think that these types of decks are, um, they're, they're just not fun. <laughs> they're just not fun. Because I feel like you don't feel good after resolving a virus, but that's just me. Maybe that's just me. In any case, we got to have the tech giant work for the for the thumbnail, of course. Fusilier Dragon, the dual mode beast. Neither a beast nor a dragon. Quite funny. This card works differently in Edison than it does in Goat. So if you set it, you can actually tribute it for a virus. Whereas in Goat format, you can't actually do that. So it's much better in Edison format. And then on top of that, combos with skill drain. It lets you get over a bunch of different threats in the format. If you have skill drain face up, it attacks over almost all the commonly played synchro monsters, etc., etc., which is kind of your only out to dealing with resolved monsters. So decks that play viruses, once again, they are high rolling that you hit the cards out of your opponent's hand. But if you don't, you have a lot of trouble dealing with a resolved threat because here you are sitting like a fool. You sacrificed your strong monster and now your opponent has a strong monster and you're just like, I don't have any removal spells in my deck because I had to dedicate everything to getting a turn one virus consistently as possible. So that's another reason why I don't like this deck. I think it's very high rolly, even more so than some of the other combo decks in the format, like Dragon Turbo, etc., etc. But, you know, got to show it off at some point. In the sideboard, we have two The End of Anubis. This is a cool card. It doesn't see a lot of play. I think it's pretty good. Helps you deal with annoying battle recruiters, zombie monsters, treeborn frog, that kind of thing. And it's also an eradicator target. I'm also citing two Cyber Dragons, and I'm citing three copies of Intercept, because again, this deck doesn't really have a lot of ways to deal with a Resolved Monarch. <laughs> As you're noticing in the main deck, it's literally like summon Fusilier with Skill Drain up, or book it and attack over it, and that's just about it. You really don't have a lot of great ways to consistently deal with big threats. Yeah, extra deck's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and hop into the replay. So the replay is versus Nicholas97, who was an incredibly good sport and played this match out, despite... Again, it being a very frustrating deck to play against and not a very fun deck for either parties involved. I'm going to show both hands. Well, actually, I'm just going to... Well, yeah, I'm just going to show both hands. They get shown anyway because, obviously, the virus is resolved. Um, yeah, and I know, like, my opinions heavily influence what people do and don't do in the format. And I'm not saying, like, do or don't play things like Gladiator Beasts or, or Flambells. That's usually a meme, you know what I mean? But, like, for this, for this type of deck, it's like, man... <laughs> If you play with this type of deck, it's like you must really not like having fun. Like you're you're only there to ruin everybody's time, that type of thing. In any case, opening hand, we got Trigodia plus the viruses, and we have Rhoda plus Soroko plus the viruses. So we basically have a guaranteed turn one virus. I'm gonna make the more aggressive play because we picked up Fusilier for turn. So Fusilier means my eradicator will be live. If I didn't draw Fusilier for turn, let's say I had drawn another Greffer or I had drawn like a Vayu, maybe not a Vayu, but Another Greffer, for example, I would have just passed because I want Trigodia to be my Eradicator target, or I would have set Eradicator and passed, but usually I just pass here because I don't want to expose my Eradicator before it's chainable, more or less. So yeah, I would just pass. If they attack, I get to drop Trag, and then I can set up my Eradicator plus Deck Dev turn and hopefully just rip their entire hand apart. Now, my opponent actually has some pretty good cards here. They have Flanville Fire Dog, which is a great way to deal with Greffer and Soroko. I actually think... As the Greffer Blackwings and the Hamster Vayu decks pick up in popularity and as zombies pick up in popularity, Flamvel Fire Dog increases in equity quite a bit. I think this is one of the better cards in the metagame right now, just given the popularity of Greffer as a card and Stratos as well. This card preys on Greffer and Stratos. Okay, 
So we wrote it for Greffer because we drew the Fusilier, so we're just going to ignore Trigodia. We're basically saying I'm playing this game without Trigodia. I'm going to hope my viruses get there because that's what this deck does. You just try to virus as early as possible and just hope they get there. I banish the value in the Sirocco, I bring out Armed Wing, and then I pass. Now I don't need to do this deck dev thing in the in the draw phase because there's no like little monster that they can like get value out of basically that's commonly played before they've normal summoned and I can use my deck dev as a response. Also, I kind of want to like feign that I have like a D prison in case they do have something like Flambell Fire Dog. So yeah, they go ahead and activate heavy and I get even more value out of my deck dev, basically chaining it to the heavy. So this is two for now four because we're getting heavy storm, double spy and gale out of the hand. That being said, the opponent's hand is pretty strong. Like they can make two level eights here and we're going to suffer. So they go fire dog attack over Greffer. We can't drop Trag on this attack because then Magician can just attack over Trag, but we can drop Trag on the next attack. And the reason we are going to drop Trag is because if we top deck Brain Control, let's say they make Stardust, right? If we top deck Brain Control, we can Brain Control their Stardust and then double tribute for Fusilier. So that's one of our ways to deal with a level eight synchro. Like I said, this deck, if you look at it, we high rolled on the virus, we missed, and now they're getting a level eight synchro. Well, we didn't miss, but we missed quote unquote in that they're resolving a threat under the virus. And now we have to figure out a way to deal with that. Looking at our outs, what do we have? We have Gale, we have Brain Control, we have Dark Arm Dragon. Dark Arm Dragon right now, it needs another Dark in the Grave. That can be Trigodia. Once again, Brain Control, if we top deck that, we can take a Stardust, we can double sack for Fusilier. Other than that though, we're pretty much owned. We really have nothing. Skill Drain is another out if they make something other than Colossal Fighter. Book of Moon could potentially be an out. It just depends on the circumstances and the situation, more or less. If we find Dark Greffer, I think that is also an out if they make specifically Stardust, because we can pitch Fusilier, send Bayou, and then make an Armor Master and crash. But they do have that rekindling, which we need to be careful of. So yeah, they go ahead and make their Thought Ruler Archfiend to play around Brain Control. Very smart for the opponent here to make Thought Ruler Archfiend. That cuts our outs to pretty much just Skill Drain and Dark Armed, potentially Gores too, of course but they do have that rekindling looming. Gale doesn't even fully out the Thought Ruler here because we'd summon it, we'd have it, but then neither Trag nor Gale could get over it. But thankfully Gale is a tuner, so we'd be able to synchro and then make Armor Master and then we'd probably win if we drew Gale. So we have like four or five outs and we do hit, which is very lucky for us. So we high roll, we get lucky, we set Skill Drain, we set Irad, and then we pass. So the reason I do this is because he didn't rekindling last turn. I don't want him to rekindling this turn. I want him to just kill my Trag. And then on my turn, I can summon Fusilier, no matter what he has. We get to see what he has, so we get to see how we're going to play around it. We can Skill Drain, pump up our Fusilier, run over the Thought Ruler, then hopefully Erad hit two spells. That's like my quote-unquote win con for this game. So yeah, he reveals that he hit a spell card, Mind Control, useless here for him, which is insanely good for us because that means our game plan is now initiated. He attacks over Trag, Trag has zero attack in the grave, so he gains nothing. We go ahead and slam down this upstart goblin and we hit dark arm so we hit two of our outs out of our like four outs that we had through this situation and yeah this is just going to be crushing we normal summon dark armed or not normal we special summon dark armed and we normal summon fusilier then we activate skill drain and we attack for 5600 uh yeah this also stops like i mean we know his hand so stops everything on his turn what we're going to do is we're going to eradicator sacrifice dark arm dragon call spell card the reason we want to sacrifice dark arm dragon is because if he top deck space typhoon he can chain space typhoon to skill drain even though of course the uh the top deck will be revealed we could choose whether or not to, to hit either of these also if he top decks book of moon that could be annoying but we're gonna hit all the spell cards anyway so it's, it's kind of irrelevant i'm just keeping the guy with more defense uh more or less so he reveals book of moon we erad call spells and then, uh, yeah, he says, OMG pre. And I'm like, yeah, this deck is pre. Like, this deck is just, like, inarguably just trying to high roll with viruses. And we just managed to get there. And that's just, like, luck sack of the century. We made a couple of plays to make sure we could get there. Like, basically, like, go for the deck dev as early as possible. Try to set up a situation where Dark, Dark, Dark Armed was live. AKA by summoning, or not AKA, but IE by summoning the Trigodia. And, yeah, just, like, we, we, we set up the situation where it works. But it, it wasn't a whole lot of effort for us to set up this situation. You know what I mean? Like, we only had to navigate, like, one or two things. Plus, we're working with perfect information because the virus tells us exactly what he's drawing. We hit for 28. He draws for turn. It's Starlight Road. And then we go to the next game. Now, for game two versus Flamvels, I made some... I didn't honestly know what I was supposed to sideboard. So, I sideboarded kind of randomly. I sided out one Greffer. I sided out one Upstart. I sided out one Deck Dev. 
I cited out, I think, the Burial. And then I think I cited out one other card. I think I cited out the Giant Orc. Yeah, it was Giant Orc, Greffer, Upstart, Burial, and Deck Dev. And I brought in double Cyber Dragon, Space Typhoon, double Bottomless. So Bottomless helps us deal with Thought Ruler, and it helps us deal with um, Colossal Fighter, Goyo, those types of cards that we normally struggle with. Space Typhoon can help us play through back row, and then Cyber Dragon can help us attack over Spy and Fire Dog in a fair game, where maybe we just have Cyber Dragon, Skill Drain, and we're just beating down. Um, that was my sideboard process. Going second is a little bit weird. I'm not exactly sure how we're supposed to sideboard going second, but... In hindsight, taking out Greffer, I think, is a mistake. I think I should have left all three Greffer in, and you'll see we get punished this game uh, pretty hard for that. So his opening hand is, like, solid. He finds DD Warrior Lady, sets it, passes a turn, sets the Dust Tornado as well. We have Allure of Darkness. We banish a Greffer. We special Cyber Dragon. We attack. Trades with the DD Warrior Lady. Now, I was thinking if it was Spy or Raikou, maybe we could wait till we have Skill Drain up before we attack into the dude. But there's a chance he just has like Heavy Storm or something, plus Space Typhoon, plus Dust Tornado. Like there's a lot of ways that he can play through Skill Drain or invalidate it. Plus if he has like Book of Moon too, he can like flip Raikou, chain Book, Book his own Raikou, that kind of thing. And I didn't want that to happen. So I figured just attacking into the set monster is better for us. So I attack into DD Warrior Lady. I set my four cards and I pass. He doesn't blind Dust Tornado. I actually think this is a really good play from him. Uh, he did leave in Trap Dust Shoot, which is interesting. I'm a little bit surprised to see that, but he was going first, so uh, kind of unlucky that he drew it here once we've already set four cards. Flamvel Fire Dog gets summoned. We bottomless it. I do not want Rekindling Live. I do not want to deal with that card. That card's too good against us. He sets two back row and then passes. So here I normal summon Greffer. No, I don't. I just pass. He picks up Magician. He summons it, and I'm like, that's chill. Honestly, because he has... Dust Tornado, he could have like risked the instant fusion. I don't think it's getting that much better. Either that or he should have just waited on summoning the Magician, but he wanted to apply some pressure, so he just summons this attacks, and I'm like, that's fine, I can run over it with anything. Uh, I pick up Eradicator, kind of bricky. We've already drawn both our Greffers, which is obviously awkward. It's not the best card in this matchup because of Fire Dog specifically. We special Cyber Dragon, attack over. He just lets this happen because he can kill it with his own Cyber Dragon. We set our Eradicator and pass. He picks up Heavy Storm, obviously looking kind of awkward on this board, but actually I think he should have maybe tried to go for it this turn with like Blind Dust and then Heavy Storm. Uh, at the very least, he would have forced Solemn and then guaranteed his Cyber Dragon resolves. He goes Special Cyber Dragon. I could have Solemned there, but I was a little bit afraid of his Solemn, and our, our uh, back row is a little bit dead. Skill Drain and Eradicator don't really do anything. I kind of wanted to Skill Drain before I used Solemn to save that extra 500 life points. It could end up mattering, and I just... I don't know. I figured Skill Drain would deal with the Chimera Tech. Yes, we lose our Cyber Dragon, but we kill the Chimera Tech for free functionally. So he attacks. We activate Skill Drain, pay a thousand. He does Tornado as a Skill Drain, and I'm still afraid of his Solemn. I think I played this game a little too afraid. Um, honestly, I think I played it a little too afraid. He ends up dusting our Skill Drain. I probably should have just Solemn this. That's what I should have Solemned, but I go for the Book of Moon instead. So now our last piece of defense is Solemn Judgment, which is pretty bad. That means any normal summon, we're basically forced to Solemn. Uh, and the Eradicator is just sitting here kind of dead. So again, you take a risk on these virus cards, and they don't really they don't really do it. I'm going to be honest. They don't really do it. And if you look at the cards that we would have cited out, I mean, we cited out Burial, Upstart, and another Greffer, another Virus, um, and then Giant Orc. We would have never been able to activate that Eradicator had we had the cards in. So it, it's it's neither here nor there. Like sometimes you're just gonna draw this card dead and and it's not gonna get there. So yeah, I summon Greffer. I no priority. He bottomlesses and I'm like, well fuck me, that sucks. But at least it's not getting Fire Dog. He picks up Book of Moon. He sets it. Now this I think is an interesting play setting the Book of Moon here. I would have held it and then planned on heavy storming at some point plus instant fusion. So I definitely would have set wouldn't have set the Book of Moon here. I think that's a bit of a, an error from Nicholas. I think his game plan now is heavy storm plus find a kill. He has had enough life total where he can actually take a couple hits and still be chilling. Here we set call. We don't want to commit the gill yet again because we don't want to be forced to solemn a fire dog. It's really annoying. He picks up another back row, Typhoon, and then commits that as well. And again, I don't think he should be committing this hard into his set cards. 
he might be playing around Starlight Road a little bit, maybe. That's what he's, like, afraid of. But at the same time, like, you don't want to set this many cards into your own Heavy Storm. It's a pretty big error. We pick up the one dead card in our deck. Well, there's several dead cards in our deck at this point. But this is the most dead card in our deck, which is Rhoda. And it has no targets because we sided out the third Greffer, which is really awkward. And I'm just sitting here like, bruh, kill me. Anyway, <laughs> I summon Gale. I attack over the monster. I'm trying to initiate a situation where I'll chain link two Call of the Haunted to play around Bottomless. Even though one Bottomless has gotten used, he still has another one and he still has Torrential for sure still in his deck. So as long as I'm doing Call of the Haunted chain link two, I can bring out Cyber Dragon to uh, play around Bottomless. Here he picks up another Instant Fusion, sets that and passes. Again, you really don't want to be setting this many cards into your own Heavy Storm. It's a little silly. We pick up Vayu. We go ahead and summon that. Attack with both. And yeah, we're pretty much just in a weird sort of stalemate where I'm like pretty confident one of his back row is Dust Shoot. Pretty confident one of his back row is Solemn. And pretty confident one of his back row is Book of Moon. I, at this point, don't know about Instant Fusion. So I'm thinking, okay, what could he have possibly drawn that are bricks that he doesn't want to use here? It's Book of Moon on Gale. It's Trap Dust Shoot, which is dead, and it's Solemn Judgment, which he didn't want to spend on a little monster like Gale or Vayu. So I'm thinking that his three back row that are set are some combination of those, potentially a Starlight Road. So those are those are kind of my like four reads. That being said, um, I, I, I get it pretty right. I mean, I get two out of three, which is generally speaking pretty good. We attack for 1300. He draws return. He finds his Solemn. And now I know all three out of three, basically, or at least I'm playing as if he has those three. Uh, we pick up Brain Control, and I'm like, okay, that's amazing. If I just get in a little bit of damage, Brain Control should be able to win us the game, right? I attack for 800. I attack for 1,300. He takes this 1,300. We pass the turn, and he picks up his Starlight Road. So now I know his four out of four, but one of them's just not even in play. We pick up Deck Dev, another dead virus card here. Really awkward uh, that I had cited out the Greffer, but, you know, you kind of have to do what you have to do versus this deck. Like, you can't afford to be committing Greffer on the draw versus FireDog.deck. It's, like, pretty bad. In any case, we go ahead and attack with both. He books the Gale, and I make an error. I should have actually Call of the Haunted Cyber Dragon in response to this Book of Moon, because that was the whole point. If I had done that, obviously he would have just chained Typhoon to it, but then we could have solemned that Typhoon, and then he would have been forced to solemn back. But I don't think that really changes much. I don't. I honestly don't think it changes much. Because uh, we, we set the virus here, we pass the turn, he goes Heavy Storm, we're basically forced to Solemn this to represent something, I don't fucking know. He chains his Solemn back, which I was fairly certain that he had, and now he's at a perfect life total, since he did top deck specifically Fire Dog, or um, if he had drawn Magician it also would have worked, where he can uh, make Thought Ruler, and Thought Ruler will put him just above that range where he can negate Brain Control and we can't kill him. And he does correctly make Thought Ruler here to play around Brain Control, which I think is a good play. Um, yeah, I liked his use of Thought Ruler in this match. I think he did a good job of of understanding that Thought Ruler is the card that you should be making here. Anyway, we gun this upstart. It doesn't find us anything we can do anything with, and then we just have to end the game. Because if we set this, he attacks over it. We're just losing. It's just a losing fight. So I can see the game here, and we go to the next one. I didn't want to give him too much information either. Um, about like the rota or the brain control. I didn't want to risk anything basically. So yeah, uh, we go ahead and go back to siding. Now for going first, I actually switch things up quite a bit. I bring back in the third upstart and the dark refer. I cut both cyber dragons because going first cyber dragons a lot worse. It's just not as good. I did bring, I did leave in the two bottomless and then I think I, I'm not sure if I brought in the road over the typhoon or not. I might have, but those were my big changes was I, I took the Cyber Dragons back out and I put in the Upstart and the Greffer again because I am going first. So I need as much high roll virus potential as possible. So yeah, game three we go first. We open up with Gores. We open up with a lot of virus stuff and we just pass the turn. Uh, this is obviously telegraphing Gores Trag and he knows that, so he is going to play around it. His opening hand's pretty fucking good. He has Rekindling, Raiko, he has Torrential. He has a lot of stuff going for him. He just sets Raiko and passes. I actually really like this conservatism with the torrential tribute as well. I think waiting on it is pretty smart. We pick up Fusilier, which is really good. It's like probably one of the best draws in our deck here because it turns on our Eradicator through Raiko. So we're able to set Fusilier, set Eradicator, and pass. And this can name spell cards that could help him maybe deal with the gores if that resolves. So here he flips Raiko, targets the Erad. We chain Erad, we name spell, but he only has one spell. So we kind of get two for one here. He mills three cards. Again, the virus high roll, when it misses, it looks pretty pretty bad. That being said, we can play around the majority of his hand. 
which is nice. Like Cyber Dragon and Thunder King are pretty weak versus our deck. Um, and I think DD Warrior Lady can be weak if we find Skill Drain. So here he's going to make a really good play. He's going to summon Flamvel Magician and then just attack with both. This plays around the Gores that he's known about since the first turn. He's read that there's a Gores in my hand. So yeah, this plays around that because if I drop Gores, he can Synchro Summon Goyo Guardian. And Goyo Guardian beats both Gores and the 200 or 1400 token depending on when I want to drop it. So yeah, he makes Goyo Guardian and then passes a turn. Still electing not to set the Tarantula, which again, I think is really heads up play from the opponent here. These sweepers, you don't want to commit them too early. Potentially, you're going to want a heavy storm, something like that. We pick up Space Typhoon. So I did leave in the Space Typhoon. I, I wondered if I had cited that out for Road. I must have cited out something else for Road. I don't remember what it is, but I cited out something for Road. It was, I, wait, I have out one deck dev, one burial, and I forget the last card I cited out. I can't remember it. It might have been a skill drain. Or it might have been... So, so I have out, deck dev, burial, giant orc. And then I have one other card out. And I'm not sure what it is. I might have left out the upstart for the Starlight Road. I don't remember. I don't remember what I cited out. I'd have to go back and look at it. Anyway, we just pass because we have Gores. So it's like if he wants to attack with the Goyo, then we get to drop Gores. And if he doesn't, then it means he's hitting us with DD Warrior Lady, which sucks. But uh, that's fine. He picks up Bottomless, he summons DD Warrior Lady, and then he makes a very aggressive play where he attacks with Goyo Guardian first. Now, I like this play and I don't like this play for a number of reasons, because it basically forces everything to kind of cascade down. If he attacks with DD Warrior Lady only, I can't drop Gors. I just can't. Because then, if I do, I get a 1500 token, I get a 2700 Gors, which he steals with Goyo Guardian, and then the game just continues as a stalemate. But I have six cards in hand, so I'm going to be discarding on the next end phase. So basically, him attacking with Goyo Guardian first forces me to drop the Gores now. It forces everything to kind of cascade down now. Whereas if he just had been attacking with DD Warrior Lady only, uh, he can basically keep the Gores in my hand forever. So I think this is an interesting play. He's basically banking on the rest of my six cards, the one I'm going to draw for turn and the other five, not being able to out Goyo Guardian, which isn't necessarily the worst bank because... With a heavy virus deck like this, there's not a lot of spot removal for monsters like Goyo Guardian that have already resolved besides Bottomless Trap Hole, which is the only one he's seen besides Solemn Judgment as well. So he's like basically banking that I don't have Book of Moon or Deprison or something like that by forcing the action now by attacking with the Goyo. Again, attacking with DD Warrior Lady is the play that just kind of like says, okay, we'll, we'll reset this position every single turn after this. And I think that attacking with DD Warrior Lady is kind of the better play uh, overall, but um, I think that, you know, forcing the action isn't the worst thing you can do, especially when you have two trap cards that you just kind of want to get live. Anyway, he trades the token with the DD Warrior Lady. This is before Skill Drain hits play. Maybe he wanted to get value out of his DD Warrior Lady before potential Skill Drain is set. But again, if he just attacks with DD Warrior Lady only, there's nothing I can do. I can't drop Gores there. Otherwise, Goyo takes it and I'm just like in a terrible position. So yeah, pretty much. I think just attacking with DD Warrior Lady is a little bit better. And then here I get bailed out by the fucking gods, dude. This is like the best possible top deck which is elfin there are a couple other really good top decks i could have drawn gale i could have also drawn i think brain control what's in my grave yeah brain control gale skill drain wouldn't have been terrible um book of moon so it's one two three four five five good top decks and then like two okay top decks uh which is what i was looking for pretty much there and uh we got one of the five good ones which is just again this match both game one and game three came down to me top decking something like a one of five card in like 30 plus cards and i managed to do it which is another reason why i think this deck again you probably shouldn't play it but i just want to demonstrate that decks like this can exist in edison format I think that's the whole point of this video that I'm trying to get across. But you do have to get a significant amount of luck like we did in both game one and game three in order to really have a chance to take on something as simple as a Goyo Guardian. So here we just Typhoon the back row and then we sack for Elfin. Elfin switched the Goyo and he's just dead lost here, which is really unfortunate for him. Uh, we sacked the shit out of him this game. He's still under Eradicator. So top decking a spell card on the next turn is bad for him. Most monsters here are bad for him because Cyber Dragon doesn't make a Synchro. 
Cyber Dragon plus Thunder King, neither of them can get over Elfin. Even if he draws like Book of Moon, it gets immediately discarded to the virus before he gets a chance to activate it. I know someone in the comments is going to ask that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, it's it's just a bad situation for him pretty much. He would need to find like specifically Deep Prison or Raiko or something like that to really be in this game. And then on top of that, we have Solemn plus Road plus Heavy. So next turn I can set Solemn Road. Next turn I can Heavy my own uh, back row, activate road, summon Stardust, and then just like cook him. So yeah, we set our two. He draws another Thunder King. Card just doesn't do anything into this situation. He sets the Torrential, passes the turn. We go Heavy Storm, chain Starlight Road, special out the Stardust Dragon. And this is a ruling that I've messed up in the past. And I know a lot of people messed this up in the past. Um, but he tries to Torrential here, but you can't. You can't. And the reason why is because Torrential says when a monster is summoned. So like um, Torrential Tribute and... Uh, bottomless trap hole can't be used on a stardust dragon summoned from starlight road because starlight road is always going to be chain link two so they're always summoned chain link two so technically torrential tribute doesn't have a window for activation basically um yeah not that it matters because we have solemn anyway so but yeah that's pretty much it and drawing mind crush is just a nail in the coffin because we can just two for one hit the thunder kings so we suck the shit out of this guy um we attack for 47 he drops down to 2,000. I set the Mind Crush, but yeah, that's going to be Curtains. He special Cyber Dragon. He goes Torrential. We chain Stardust and then chain Mind Crush. The reason I don't Solemn this is because there's a chance he's drawn Brain Control, and I want to save Solemn for Brain Control. That's like the one last thing, the last piece of things that could cause us to lose this game is Brain Control. So I think the best possible play is to just get rid of as many of his cards as possible with Mind Crush and the Stardust Dragon, kill the Cyber Dragon, put him on zero cards, make it so Brain Control can't actually win him the game, and then guarantee the victory, as opposed to like 99% the victory, less 100% the victory. So I Mind Crush, I name the Thunder Kings, he discards both, he reveals Raiko, he can still set the Raiko and pass the turn, but we pick up Dark Refer. Now if we hadn't drawn Dark Refer here, so basically I'm a fucking insane sack, because I top decked, what was it, Elfin into... Mind Crush into Dark Greffer, which is back to back to back insane draws, by the way. Um, and then on top of that, if we hadn't drawn Greffer, we would just attack over the Cyber Dragon and then just Solemn the Raikou potentially. Uh, just depends on the situation. We might not even Solemn the Raikou. We might let the Raikou resolve and then just summon Sirocco and beat over it the next turn uh, and Solemn whatever he draws for turn, and that should be good enough to win the game. But because we drew Greffer, we can push the advantage this turn. We go ahead and buy you banish, bring out armed wing, attack over the cyber dragon for maximum damage, attack over the Raiko with Greffer. Now there's consideration to attack over the Raiko with Elfin, but that's actually a throw. Because if you attack over the Greffer with Elfin and he chooses to pop our back row, he survives with 100 life points and he can still top deck rekindling and flip this game around. So you absolutely do have to attack the Raiko with Greffer, force the Raiko to target the Elfin. And then, uh, yeah, you, it's very easy to choke this game. There's a lot of opportunities where we could have just like messed up once and then like absolutely thrown this game away. He finds Book of Moon off the top, but that's not going to be enough because we have Solemn Judgment. So yeah, that's that. This deck is miserable. Uh, I, I hate decks like this. Like from the bottom of my heart, I hate hand loop formats. I hate any deck that's attempting to hand loop people. I really even dislike X Sabers, even though that's, you know, one of those decks that isn't very good. I mean, this deck, I would put it on par with something like X Sabers, where it's like, it's not very good because it can ran it randomly loses to like very basic shit. Like if my opponent summons a Sirocco, I can lose to that randomly with this deck. Whereas like, um, you know, like your traditional decks that aren't trying to min max on the virus spam, uh, don't necessarily lose to that as quickly as possible. They have more play to them. Uh, I, I don't think this deck is very good. I think it's like one of those decks that you should be aware of. You should respect viruses in this capacity you should always understand that they exist in this format and they can cheese games maybe have a cyborg plan for someone who's trying to pull this sort of thing off uh yeah i don't really know what the point of this video was other than to say don't do stuff like this it's it's pretty cringe i'll see you guys in the next vid thanks for tuning in peace out